Hey you guys, I was looking at Atlanta Black Star articles and I came across this one and I wanted to cover this story in particular because I think it brings to fruition the reality of the subconscious thought process some of the people in our community exude, especially when they are so easily deceived by people from the larger society. In my past videos, I've talked about how black people, no matter the socioeconomic tax bracket, typically falls under two categories, even though no one is forcing them to even make the decision to begin with. You have some of our people coercing others to vote because of some emotionally reactive circumstance that they feel will befall us should we choose not to engage and vote for Joe. And in the same instance, those who are complete sellouts and give in to overtly racialized Republican propaganda under the impression that racism does not exist, therefore willingly choosing a state of delusion. The path that leads to black people choosing Republicans may be an intuitive stance where they believe that choosing this direction will somehow elevate their social status and afford them some type of benefits that people seem to think we have as far as garnering sustainable resources. But our community is extremely irrational in its approach towards politics and I will continue to say that until collectively we understand that this system is counterproductive towards creating infrastructure for black people in a profitable way. And I also frequently make mention that it seems like with our people, we are extremely swindled by false promises and providence filled speeches that ultimately they do nothing but make black people feel better thinking that some type of change will occur when that is unfounded and baseless because we fail to understand that even in the slightest perspective, helping us means that it pushes our social status one step closer to the larger society and they will never allow that to happen. The way in which we seemingly force other black people to vote in a manner similar to intimidation by engaging in shaming tactics and talking points by saying all of these socially damaging rhetoric like if you don't vote your ancestors this and that and if you don't vote you can't complain is absurd and you all need to stop with trying to make our people feel bad for not wanting to participate in a system designed to make your community face perpetual disenfranchisement disguised under commercial success. I've also been noticing the other trend emerge where unique advertising is created to appeal to our community in the form of adult dancers masquerading around in voting body paint. I really don't see how we are actually not more offended by this because literally this is how dumb the large society thinks that we are. Oh, you don't have to give a long political dissertation. Just show them visually appealing imagery such as strippers and make sure you paint Biden on them. It's a major insult to your intelligence, but due to purposeful blindness and not seeing beyond this because of our stronghold on this, we tell our people, oh, well, at least they got the right message, though. Y'all better make sure y'all get out there and vote. This rhetoric, when it's regurgitated, is so migraine-inducing that I have to log off of whatever social media platform I'm on and just go to bed. It's that bad. And I gave you guys my thoughts on that because it will better help you understand this article and why hopefully by now it shouldn't be surprising at the behavior being expressed and some of our people. But the article starts off by saying, Ice Cube has responded to criticism after it was revealed on Tuesday, October 13th, that he worked with Donald Trump's administration on what White House senior advisor Katrina Pearson called the Platinum Plan. This $500 billion package will supposedly help black communities. The plan reportedly aims to create 3 million new jobs, push for criminal justice reform, improve access to better education and job opportunities, reduce health care costs, and designate Juneteenth as a national holiday. News of Cube's work with the Trump organization came from Black Voices from Diante Johnson. The conservative tweeted, So, at Ice Cube has officially given the Trump campaign permission to reveal that he has been helping us develop President Trump's groundbreaking Black Trump platform, the Platinum Plan. Leaders gonna lead, haters gonna hate. Thank you for leading at Katrina Pearson. Cube responded, facts. I put out the CWBA. Both parties contacted me. Them said we'll address the CWBA after the election. Trump campaign made some adjustments to their plan after talking to us about the CWBA. Right off, if you guys paid attention to that first paragraph when it mentioned that a $500 billion package will supposedly help black communities, that should have already caught your attention. I think we need to be careful to hold 
recall our emotions on this and really take time to dissect and deconstruct what's being said as opposed to instantly reacting. I know for me, the first question that came from this is, it's not necessarily reparations. And the fact that this is being proposed by a party whose ideologies are very opposing to our existence is already questionable. So how and where will these funds be dispersed and allocated to our community? And more specifically, what's the catch? Let us just conceptualize momentarily and say that yes, this is a plan that actually adheres to its promises of deliverance. So will some underwritten rule or policy try and make this the equivalent of reparations which will avoid any future requests for african americans to receive actual reimbursement from our ancestors enslavement and see this is the problem because of our childlike mentality which inhibits our ability to analyze situations and apply critical thinking skills to said situations our emotions cloud our discernment and this process is overlooked entirely and it seems like only a select few people within our community possess foresight and have the capacity to interpret outcomes that will likely occur as a result of the conditions of whatever circumstance plagues black people but i also understand that the element of unpredictability is also a factor that must be taken into account the point is to try and apply logic whenever necessary because of our juvenile comprehension of how situations unfold. And we also need to address something else. The organization Black Voices for Trump are a group of individuals that have long since sold themselves out. Republicans openly express their racial views, so to look past that suggests that a certain level of delusion exists in the minds of these people. I don't look favorably towards Republicans, just the same as I look at Democrats with contempt. However, this does open up the conversation about our inability to learn from the past. Black people are exceptionally gullible to any and everything that they're told. And I've noticed the same pattern occur before where candidates will make the announcement of some grandiose miracle that will be promised to us and it doesn't register in our minds to see that politics is a game. One where the fight for more power is everlasting with no benefits produced at least as it pertains to our community. And this same mechanism is mirrored in Christianity where black people have the belief that if they keep praying and praying and praying, they'll be delivered from some imminent form of evil or guaranteed prosperous results subsequent to their final transition. And I just don't see how some of us don't see the correlation. But back to Ice Cube, you all are gonna listen to me someday when I tell y'all to stop listening to these celebrities and stop taking them serious when it comes to political affairs of your community. There is no way that a person like Ice Cube, who was once renowned for rapping about the same systemic issues black people face, later develops trust towards a people responsible, whether it be directly or indirectly, for the disparagement your community faces. And this is the reality of, of our community and the hypocrisy that permeates throughout it because let's not forget another one that you all hold with high regard, Jay-Z. Remember the deal he signed with the NFL or did we forget about that one too? And I want you guys to read this small excerpt right here by Malcolm X because it applies 100% to the situation. He said, the first thing he does when he comes to power, he takes all the Negro leaders and invites them for coffee to show that he's all right. And these Uncle Toms can't pass up the coffee. They come away from the coffee table telling you and me that this man is all right. Does that not sound like the exact same behavior being expressed by Ice Cube? Jay-Z? Do I need to go on? So how about instead of listening to these celebrities who haven't a clue about advancing the black community, and we actually listen to our ancestors that had our best interests at heart? Now, let me also say this before you all think that I think the whole process is useless. I'm not saying that because voting at your local level is important. So this is a level that has a direct effect on where you live. So I encourage you to at least participate in this area of voting, but do it strategically and with some research in mind as to what policies can be passed to better your community locally. He mentioned adjustments and we don't know exactly what that could entail. And another issue with politics is that everything is normally generally generalized and spoken in such vague statements that it leaves you in suspense as to how the process will befall the nation of people within it. And this is also why I look at this system with such disdain because the most important aspect of politics is paying close attention to what's not being said or what's not specifically being referenced. The fact of the matter is, is that he sold out and he can justify this whichever way he wants. And you better believe that some black people somewhere will find some way to rationalize this too, just like that whole Jay-Z situation where they were talking about how this gives him a seat at the table. And that's preposterous in terms of making moves because why not just build your own table and have all of your people there with you to let them know what's going on? 
But let's just go ahead and continue with this. It says the following day, the rapper took to his Twitter account to defend his involvement in the project after receiving backlash from fans and critics online. More specifically, the Are We There Yet actor responded to a tweet from a fan who wrote, my hip hop hero at Ice Cube is working with the dark side. I haven't felt this low since Kobe passed, heartbreaking. They added, Ice Cube, I'm not sure you understand how much we value your voice and when we see you jump in the shark, it kills us, especially in 2020. Ice Cube retweeted the supporters post and replied saying, every side is the dark side for us here in America. The West Coast rapper continued, they're all the same until something changes for us. They all lie and they all cheat, but we can't afford not to negotiate with whoever is in power or our condition in the country will never change. Our justice is bipartisan. Critics online were still unconvinced by the rapper's justification, including one person who wrote back, this both sides BS is nonsense. Trump is still intentionally separating brown kids from their parents and caging them. They added, some of these kids will never ever be reunited with their parents, but you got to call back and what will inevitably be nothing more than the broken promises. This is also something else I forgot to talk to you guys about. This rhetoric parallels that whole choosing between two evils nonsense that I keep noticing is being spewed. And I'm going to be honest, we speak with such a defeatist mentality that we plot our own downfall by convincing ourselves and each other that we absolutely, with all our strength, must vote to hopefully not die faster than the other option that was provided. Again, I will say to that, no one is forcing you to choose. This whole BS talking point about, oh, well, if your vote didn't mean anything, then why are people trying to engage in voter suppression to take away your right to vote? I get so tired of this one. First off, I'm going to need for us to stop speaking with such ignorance that we think it comes off as some form of intellect. Voter suppression is a real thing, and it is considered a form of systemic oppression, undoubtedly. But the thing is, they throw that out there in hopes to get your community even more riled up so that it provides more ammunition for you to tell your people to vote. And I know we don't like to admit it because we've convinced ourselves that this is the sole way out, but it's counterproductive. And if it changes, anything then it has not happened in the time since this right has been given to us other than access to education and permission to be around the dominant society without consequences which by the way was a result of the civil rights movement but let's hypothetically say that it was because of our participation in this endless cycle why has it taken several generations for our community to be made whole why can't a black person sleep inside their own home without having their life tragically taken from them why can't a black person apply for a home loan without the probability of exponentially higher interest rates or denials being increased? Why do black students disproportionately suffer harsher penalties and consequences from the school to prison pipeline? And see, these issues have not been addressed and with some co-opting are issues for their own personal gain. Talking about Breonna Taylor would have wanted us to vote and Trayvon would have wanted us to vote. I feel like that is so sick and disgusting to use the voices of our people that have passed and our ancestors to support this corrupted agenda of voting. And that's a major disgrace to those who came before us. Ice Cube said that they're all the same until something changes for us okay so that means your very first instinct was to go to republicans but both sides are the same like seriously you guys am i missing something because this answer makes no sense so you know they both don't have amicable intentions for you but you still decide to do business with one of them and as quiet as it's kept there are more sellouts in our community they just have yet to make their treacherous actions be brought to light but I know, and you know as well, I'm gonna finish the rest of this article because there's not much left, and then I'll tell you guys my thoughts at the end of this, but it says, another person replied to the rapper, sweet setting, quick question cube. Do you know which party has been trying to suppress the black vote and which one has been trying to prevent that suppression? The big three founders partnership with the Trump administration comes on the heels of the star making several controversial comments suggesting he would not vote for the Democratic ticket. Throughout the 2020 presidential race, Cube had continuously called out both parties to explain how they would help black Americans should they win the upcoming 2020 elections. The No Vaseline rapper also called on politicians to sign his contract with Black America, which presented many commitments related to prison reform, bank lending, and more. On Tuesday, October 13th, Cube doubled down on his comments, questioning the country's current two-party system. He also refused to endorse Democratic nominees Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, claiming that they were taking the black vote for granted, which I agree with, and further expressing that he had zero trust in either party. 
No president has done right by us, he said in an almost eight minute long video, so I don't trust none of them. Putting our hopes and dreams behind any of them just don't work. I've been making contacts with them, trying to talk about these real issues. Straight up, I believe the Democrats have been nice. I don't really see them pushing their policies in any different direction. He continued, we also met with the Republicans. They've moved their agenda a lot because of what we've said. They put $500 billion on the table, but who knows what's really going to happen. I just know one of them is going to win, and I don't know if it really matters to us. Fans slammed the Hollywood star for not being transparent and falsely pretending that he was on neither side when that wasn't the case. Three weeks ago, Ice Cube acted as if he was still vacillating between Biden and Trump while quietly working with Trump. I called it manipulation of the black male vote, and I was right, one critic wrote. Like I said before you guys, make sure you debunk that whole suppression of your vote talking point. This one is starting to become more common and a lot of people fall victim to this one not knowing how to respond, but I instantly saw right through it. It's kind of like a hook, line, and sinker situation. They do that as a means to make you believe that your vote at the federal level makes a difference. And if that was a case and it actually did, then that means technically Hillary Clinton would have won the 2016 election, but she didn't have enough electoral votes, which actually is a power that decides who will occupy presidency. But do y'all not see how this reflects Jay-Z's situation last year? He was telling all the black celebrities not to perform at the Super Bowl and all of a sudden he then turns around and signs a deal with the NFL. All I'm saying is be like Malcolm. Don't be like Jay-Z or Ice Cube in this regard. Concerning the part about prison reform and bank lending, which are some of the points that I touched on, they're not going to do that because they've had ample amounts of time to actually help the black community in a way that was substantial, but they haven't and will continue to ignore your plight. How can you have zero trust in both parties and still work with one of them? None of this makes any sense. And please, if there's something I'm not seeing, somebody please elaborate in the comments section. I'm going to leave it here and say he can give an eight minute video, an hour long video, or even a whole day's worth of explanation and it still won't add up. He's basically trying to come up with some algorithm or proof to make two plus two equal five and it's just not possible. Bottom line is you sold out. Just leave it there because in tandem with this year, nothing already makes sense anyway. So I don't even think any of us are surprised and if so, then must have been living under a rock for the past 70 years. Now fans are upset with him. There were posts on Twitter condemning him and rightfully so because that's extremely manipulative and deceptive. I don't understand why not just come right out and be honest with your people and politics is something to me that forces you to sacrifice your morality to play the twist of games and boast within this faction of government. Ice Cube doesn't know what he's doing, and judging from his explanation, that's evidently clear. But let me know your thoughts on this debauchery and how Ice Cube thinks this is some type of power move. Do you think Ice Cube needs a seat at the table like Jay-Z? Or do you think black people as a collective would have a better chance at constructing their own table where everyone can eat and no secrecy or ulterior motives exist? Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.